What up folks, Alex here. Now, no introduction for this video because it's just a real quick one. There's a bug in DaVinci Resolve. I wanna show you the bug and then show you the workaround as well. Some of you guys have actually already spotted it within the comments section. Now, I can't take credit for this workaround. It was a chap by the name of John Holt that told me the workaround. He runs this website, it's called Resolve Assets. If you fancy having a look, he's done some quite good little articles. He's got a little story on there, so definitely worth having a look. The link is in the description. I don't know whether he actually discovered this workaround or found out of someone else, but either way, he's the one that told me about it. So I'm just going to demonstrate the bug, first of all. If you're fully aware of it already, feel free to skip to the timestamp shown on screen now where I show the workaround. Now, for those not familiar with it, let's just run through it really quickly. So I've got a little clip on my timeline, like so. I'm gonna grab an adjustment clip and put it on my timeline here. Now this adjustment clip is exactly one second in length and this is a 24 frames per second timeline. So that should have 24 frames in it from zero to 24. Now if I click on the adjustment clip, I'm just gonna open up Fusion. Now as you can see, Resolve know there's only 24 frames in it but it thinks they start at frame 8,000, what's that? 86,313 and ends on 86,336, which obviously is completely wrong. Now what that means is, if we, let's just do a bit of keyframing on here. So if we hit play on my timeline, that works, it zooms. But if I give that a name, drag that into my media pool or maybe a power bin, for example, and then I add that back on. So maybe it's another project, so I'm trying to add some transitions or a blur effect like I showed in my most recent five minute Friday. If we hit play, the keyframing doesn't actually work. It's all disappeared. Now, if we click on the example here, you can see that the keyframes are still there because we've got these little arrows, but if we click on it, it'll ping you all the way down the timeline because it thinks the keyframe is miles down there. And that stops everything from working. So the workaround, what you want to do, grab an adjustment clip, put it on your timeline, now the way I like to do this, give it a click, call it something like dummy or test or example, make it the length that you want it. So I'm gonna keep this as one second. I'm gonna drag this into my media pool and then I'm gonna delete it off my timeline. Now I can drag the dummy back onto my timeline and now I can work with this one and it'll be absolutely fine. So I'm gonna call this zoom in for example so now we've got this zoom in on the timeline. Let's just do a bit of keyframing. We'll just do have a bit of a zoom in. Why not? Just zooms in like so. If we put that into our media pool, I can delete it off the timeline, drag it back onto the timeline, and it still works. That also applies if you drag the zoom in into a power bin. I can drag the zoom in back onto the timeline and it's still there. Now what you can do is grab dummy, put it on your timeline, rename it, do whatever you wanna do, put that into a power bin, delete that from your timeline, grab the dummy again. Once it's there, it's fine. You just need to build from that dummy adjustment clip rather than using a new adjustment clip every time. Hey, now this outro is completely unnecessary, but I thought I'd film one for you guys anyway, cause why not? Even if you hadn't spotted the bug yet, Hopefully it does help you in the future if you decide to start building up some resources for yourself in a nice handy power bin. If it was useful, please do give me a thumbs up. They really do help the channel. If you've got any comments or feedback, pop them down below. And again, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you ever so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.